Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, MVP Hangers 101, Place, Manage and Customize Supports in Revit. This name comes from my goal for today, which is to do a refresher on our MVP Hanger software. Our existing clients can see if they are using the software at its full potential, and the people who are looking for a Hanger placement solution for Revit can see the features and the benefits that our tool provides. And today's agenda is a quick overview of us, our products, then the live demo, takeaways, and the Q&A session. My name is Dovid Astonaitis, and I'm a BIM application engineer at AJCAD and a certified Revit professional. I'm an MEP engineer by education, and I have five years of design experience in construction projects in Lithuania and Norway. I'm in my second year in AJCAD, and I'm responsible for our MEP-related tools and also our general tools like Smart Browser and Smart Documentation. As a company, AJCAD creates applications for Autodesk Revit based on the needs of the world's leading BIM practitioners. We are authorized Autodesk developers. Our first Revit add-on was created in 2008. And we are part of a larger international Archons group since 2021. Today, we have a wide range of BIM applications for Revit, we automate various modeling, data management, and documentation tasks, and our tools can be used by engineers of many different disciplines and can be customized for different needs or technologies. In this presentation, I will talk about the MEP hangers. Now, why would you need it? For starters, nowadays many national standards or design contracts require at least LOD 350 level of detail. And that means that hangers and supports must be present in the 3D model. And I think it's a reasonable requirement because the absence of hangers often cause coordination issues and expensive rework on the construction site. The absence of hangers in the drawings also leads to estimators guessing about the quantities of materials when ordering. Now, with these evident problems, Revit still does not have a dedicated hanger placement solution and the workaround of manually placing hanger families in a project is incredibly time consuming. So in the next part of this webinar, I will jump to the live demonstration in Revit to show you an automated way of inserting hangers into your project. I will cover reusable rules, different ways of placing hangers, how to manage them in a project, and also how to modify hanger families. And lastly, I will show you an automated and customizable way of creating drawings of hangers and supports. Now let's jump into the live demo. I'm in the apartment building project here, and this will be our result for today. I already have the MEP hangers installed, and I will drag it to the drawing area for quick access. MEP hangers works on configuration files, which are the rules for placing hangers. Configurations are customizable and can be created according to specific needs, and users can have as many configurations or configuration sets as needed. Configurations have the settings for the hanger in use, the structure to attach to, spacing settings, and MEP element filters. And we also provide hanger families to work with. You can download them here. Mechanical equipment category families are a bit faster and can be seen in floor plans even when above the cut lane. So I will start with them. I will jump to the level 3 ventilation plan. To place some hangers, I will select ducts in my view, insert hangers, choose the configuration and run it. For smaller ducts, I will use a different configuration with a different hanger family. You can see it in the preview here. Let's see how this looks in 3D. See different hangers and different draw lengths and etc. Now back here, I can also support this whole ventilation system at once. And to do that, I will be using rules, which are basically a configuration inside of a configuration. I have six different rules here at the top, and I'm using different hanger families and different spacing settings according to the length and the size of a duct and whether it's insulated or not. 
So let's run this configuration. It takes a bit longer to run, but the whole system is being supported at once. And the result looks like this. So the longer 100 millimeter diameter duct have the suspension brackets placed according to the spacing settings. Shorter duct have one hanger placed exactly in the middle. Tiny pieces under 100 millimeters in length are ignored. My larger ducts get the split ring double rod hanger. And the heavier insulated ducts are supported by the Unistrut channel. To sum up this part, you can speed up the hanger insertion process and reduce errors by using configurations. Configurations also help to ensure consistency in the design of hangers and supports because the same configurations can be shared by multiple users and used in different projects. And you can quickly get going with our tool because sample configurations are provided. In the first example, you saw a situation where hangers were attached to the floor above. Next, I will show you how our software handles different situations like sloped or vertical installation, supporting MEP elements to the floor below, and creating multi-level structures. So let's find my rainwater system here. I will select this piping run, and I will support it to the wall. Again, different configuration. I can see the supports in my floor plan. And let's see it in 3D as well. So I have cantilevers on this vertical riser pipe. And also the horizontal pipe is also supported. So supports to the wall are no problem. And now let's take a look at some sloped pipes. I will find them in my underground level. MEP hangers can handle sloped pipes, sloped surfaces, or even both at once. Selecting pipes, choosing a configuration, okay and the result is this. Notice that I have different rod lengths for my hangers here, that's because our software calculates the needed rod length for every point on a pipe. And the flat deck is also no problem. Multiple structure categories at once are also supported. For example, here I have a floor above and also some concrete beams that are running perpendicular to my pipes. This is how it looks. And now I can run a configuration which looks for both floors and structural framing category elements to connect hangers to. And the result looks like this. Each hanger stops at the first structure it finds. MEP hangers also has a functionality called virtual intersections. It can find structural elements above or below MEP elements and place hangers exactly there. So these beams are a good example. I will modify my configuration to use virtual intersections. And now I have hangers placed exactly with every beam that passes. And similarly, I can use virtual intersections with columns as well. For that, I will, I will run another configuration. So a support was placed for every column in this pipe's way. For more hanger placement capabilities, let's go to this plant room with a ventilation unit. And I have the 3D view here. So first I will support these vertical ducts to the wall. And I can run multiple configurations with auto insert. And now for these large ducts coming from the air handling unit, they should probably be supported to the floor below. And I have a configuration for that. 
here I chose to place the Unistrat frame supports. And we can do multi-level hangers as well. For example, these ducts here can be supported by the Unistrat frames that are already there. So I will run another configuration. And this is the result that I get. For this horizontal duct by the wall, first I will insert some cantilevers. I will select them, flip their side, and set up an offset. And now I can run a virtual intersections configuration to finish this structure. And this is the result that I get. Now let's go back to the rainwater system for a bit. Here, as you can see, the pipe goes over the ducts that are supported. And I have a 3D view of the section as well. So I will delete hangers from this pipe, and then I will run a configuration which will place Unistrat channels to the existing Unistrat frame. And I can make this a more rigid support as well. I will select the Unistrat channels, and I will offset them down by 50 millimeters. And then I can run a configuration to find these Unistrats. Now let's go back to the apartment floor. And here I have my plumbing pipes. I will make a quick section box first. I will select the copper pipes that I have here. And I will run a configuration which places a Unistra channel that is extended to both sides to pick up pipes on left and right. And now I can select all these pipes and run a configuration which places Unistrat clamps. Let's run it. And now this is this is the solid structure that I have. And we can also place Unistrat hangers above pipes, and these hangers can be used later on. So let's do that. Again, extend it to both sides. And we can place hangers flush with the wall as well. In my plan view, I will extend this to the right side. So now it's over the heating pipes as well and I will select these heating pipes and also these water supply pipes and I will run a configuration which looks for Unistrats above and below. And this is how my final multi-level example structure looks like. So with MEP hangers, you can prevent costly mistakes on the construction site that come from the lack of hanger design in the model. And you can save lots of time because our tool is able to place hangers in almost all possible situations, unlike some of their competitors. And our flexibility allows creating multi-level structures as well. For the next part, I would like to talk about the provided families of hangers and supports for a bit. MEP hangers comes with a set of generic families of commonly used products. These families can be used as they come, but they're also easily customizable if you need to add additional sizes or change their appearance. And for the next part of this webinar, I will switch to the Structural Connections Library. Every smallest component in this library is created as a shared nested family, which means that I will be able to generate very precise builds of materials. Let's go to my domestic water supply plan of the underground level. And first, let's place some hangers. For smaller pipes, I will use a clevis hanger. And let's put the longer run on the Unistrat frame. And 
and this is how it looks in 3D. So this one support has shorter legs because there's a concrete beam above. Our Unistrut frame metric family comes with a 41 by 41 millimeter size Unistruts. And maybe that's not what you use in your projects. So now I will demonstrate the flexibility of our families. You can create any new sizes and use it with our families. So first, I will go and find my Unistrut channel family in my project browser. I will duplicate one of the types and call it 60 by 50. I will change parameter values here as well. And also the name. And now I will do the same with a family of a Unistrut frame. So duplicate 60 by 50. Change the name here. Change the value here. And now in these drop downs, I can find the products that I want to use. So the newly created 60 by 50 size. And I have similarly created new sizes for the L bracket and the post base. Okay, and the new size Unistrut frame is in the project. I will modify this configuration, change it to the new size, save, and update the configuration on this pipe. And now all the supports use the same 60 by 50 Unistruts. And I will use the same configuration for the remaining pipe run. And now I can show you the builds of materials that I have. This schedule is the summary of all the structural connections hangers that I have in my project. I have name, clamp diameter, rod length, and Unistrut lens for my Unistrut frame supports. And I have totals for every size. I have hanger parts like L brackets, post bases, clevis clamps, and I can go as small as bolts, anchors, nuts, and so on. And here is the total length of my threaded rod. Here's the total length of my 60 by 50 Unistrut, and I can see Unistruts by their individual lengths as well. To sum this up, using our Revit families, you can achieve even greater accuracy in design and construction because our hangers can be customized to reflect real world products and you can comply with LOD 400 requirements. And these families can help save costs and reduce waste because they provide the exact bills of materials. And you're not limited by our provided hangers with our software, you can use your own families as well. In the next part of this webinar, I will generate drawings of hangers and supports. But before I do that, I need to number my hangers first. For that, I will use our Sorfmark tool, which is provided in a bundle with MEP hangers. It can mark Revit elements using parameters from a family, extract data like coordinates, elevations, room or space data, and more. Now let's say that every unique size hanger should get a unique number. And I will also number unique hanger parts and unistruts. To do that, I will run a batch element numbering configuration. Okay to run it. So numbering hangers, then parts, and unistruts. Close the report. Some duplicate mark values, but that's all right. And let's go into the schedule. So I had eight different size hangers in my project, and I have eight different mark values. Hanger parts are also numbered. And so are the unistrus. Now you might have also noticed these symbols that every hanger family has. These are drilling points and they are positioned exactly where the holes for the anchors need to be drilled. And they have parameters for X, Y, and Z coordinates. And I have them in the schedule as well. So again, using sort mark, I can write all these values at once. X, 
line. And that was it. Close the report. And I can see all these values here. So our SorfMark tool can improve the quality of your Revit projects by organizing elements and generating standardized names, which can help keep track of products, not only hangers on the construction site. SorfMark configurations takes seconds to run, while doing the same in Revit alone would take hours and would be prone to mistakes. And if drilling point coordinates, like Trimble points, is your project requirement, SorfMark can provide the needed reports. And now I can create fabrication drawings. To do that, I will need another tool from the AJCAD portfolio called Smart Documentation. It can automatically tag and dimension elements, create assemblies, views, legends, and more. Today I will use it for a particular task, creating fabrication drawings of hangers and supports. I have my configurations already set up. To save some time, I will select only the Unistrad frames and maybe a couple of levices. Now create assemblies, hit create. So in the assemblies configuration, I have specified that I want to create a 3D view, a front and a left elevation, and I have assigned view templates, tagging and dimensioning configurations, and I'm also creating some schedules and I'm placing everything onto a sheet. Now you can notice that our software stops at some unique numbers, and for other numbers, it quickly passes by. That's because it's creating assembly views with dimensions and tags for hangers that are unique in size only. And if it detects an identical hanger, it groups it together with an existing one. And that information will be visible in the hanger drawings. Okay, we can close this report. And my result is assemblies with assembly views, schedules, and a sheet. And in this sheet, I have my views with dimensions and tags. And below are my schedules. So I have two identical hangers like this in my project. And this is the bills of materials for this particular size hanger. And below, I have my Unistrad frames. Again, views with dimensions and tags. 14 identical hangers to this in my project. And this is the unistrads that I'm using in this hanger and the other hanger parts and miscellaneous items. And also notice the mark values that I generated here and also here in a view as tags. And number seven, number seven is the smaller size unistrad frame. And all these dimensioning and tagging configurations, they can be applied to regular Revit views without creating assemblies. Now back in this view, I will run a tagging configuration. And this configuration automatically moves tags if it detects that some tags are overlapping. This is the result. And this number can refer me to the hanger drawing that I have. And just as quickly, I can dimension this as well. Now dimensioning configuration. And this is the result. I get distances between hangers in view. And if there's a grid line, it's also included in the dimension chain. So smart documentation allows finishing a project faster because it can automatically generate various fabrication drawings and automate various project documentation tasks. And together with MEP hangers, it provides fabrication ready drawings of hangers and supports with all the needed quantities and dimensions. And for the last example of this webinar, I want to show you how to manage hangers and Revit views and schedules. With MEP hangers, we're able to extract any information from the MEP elements and the structures that the hangers attach to. It's accomplished by creating a parameter for a hanger family with the same name as the parameter that we want to read, except that it must have a hash or a double hash symbol at the start. To extract values from the MEP element, I'm using a single hash. For example, here I'm reading category and it says that this hanger is placed on a pipe. 
And now I can use this information in my schedules to separate hangers that are placed on pipes and ducts, for example, even though I'm using the same hanger family. So this is the schedule of all my mechanical hangers. I will duplicate it and use it just for the ducts. I'll add a new parameter hash category and filter by it equals ducts. And these are all the hangers that are placed on the ducts. And now I can use this for fabrication or ordering. Let's go into my heating level three plan now. And here you can already see the problem. I can see hangers from other disciplines in this view. So that's because typically in MVP projects, we're filtering elements by their system name or system classification. But since hangers cannot be connected to system networks like ducts or pipes can, we can't filter them out in our views. But MVP hangers can solve this. I have created a parameter hash system name and it gives me this value. So now, I can go into my visibility graphics overrides. And here I have a filter that uses this parameter. And using this, I can disable visibility for all other hangers. And that cleans my view. And I can use this in my view templates for other plan views or 3D views as well, like this. And back here, we can also extract any values from the connected element as well. For example, notice how these vertical pipes are connected to different walls. This thicker one is a brick wall, and this is a gypsum board wall. And let's say that I need that information. So I will go into my project parameters and create a parameter called structural material. This is the text parameter. I need to group it under the construction group and assign it to the mechanical hangers. So currently values are empty, but I can select these pipes, run update size, and it will reread all the parameter values. And now it says that this is a brick wall and this is a gypsum wall. And I can use this information for quantities of different anchors or fasteners that need to be purchased. So in conclusion, this workflow allows us to easily gather data that could be used to make informed decisions or which can help with project organization. Getting all this data in plain Revit would require hours, while MP Hangers does it with every hanger insertion. And that's it for the live demo. Now let's go back to the slides. Some takeaways from today's webinar. With MEP hangers, no MEP element will be left unsupported because our software allows to insert hangers in many different ways, to the deck above and below, to vertical structures, or by finding elements that are in a way. Slopes, either in a pipe or in a structure, are also no issue, just like multi-level hangers. Rules for hanger insertion are customizable and once created can be reused as much as needed and can be shared with colleagues. Generic library of Revit families is also provided and is easily customizable. And if needed, you can use your own families with our software. Sorkmark tool provided together with MVP hangers will quickly number any Revit elements in your Revit model and will provide coordinates for Trimble points as well. And you can automate drawing creation with our other tool, Smart Documentation. Today, I didn't explore its full functionality, but it's capable of much more. And I didn't even have the time to cover other functionality of MEP hangers, so I will quickly mention it here. It can place fabrication hangers onto fabrication parts, it can split MEP elements, and Sorkmark can do much more as well. So let's work together. All of our products have free full feature trials. To start the trial, visit ajcad.com and download the tools for BIM doc where you can access all of our products. 
Or if you'd like, we can arrange a short meeting with one of our specialists to talk about your challenges and needs and discuss options to improve your situation. Also, always feel free to reach out to us at info at ajcat.com. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in future webinars. Have a nice day. AGA CAD, building BIM together.